British-Ukrainian student Valentina Butenko travelled to Kyiv to visit her father just a few weeks ago. And after the Russian invasion, she's decided to stay and do whatever it takes to defend her country. The 19-year-old and her father are currently taking shelter at a friend's house in Chernivtsi in western Ukraine. After driving a friend to the Moldovan border to escape the country, Valentina joins us now. Very good morning to you. Um, good morning. You uh, went back to visit your father. You found yourself caught up in the invasion. Are you safe at the moment? What's happening in the city where you're taking shelter? Um, well, currently I'm, I'm relatively safe for now. Um, obviously, we're trying to return to Kiev at our soonest opportunity, but uh, the roads are blocked and quite dangerous right now because of tanks and armory moving. But, you know, with with the kind of actions we're seeing from Putin right now, um, no place, no, no civilian settlement is off limits. This isn't a military war anymore. This is a war against normal Ukrainians against people. We have had, had air sirens in, in Chernivtsi. Um, luckily, there has been no bombing here yet, but, um, you know, we're as safe as we can be, but we don't know. We just don't know what, what this man is capable of doing. Well, I know what you're capable of doing, Valentina. You're capable of rescuing people and getting them to the border, which is an incredibly courageous thing to do. Just tell us about how you've managed to help others who do want to get out. Yeah, essentially, um, I mean, the, the coordinated effort in, in Ukraine has been amazing. You know, we have so many uh, group chats, regional group chats, uh, national group chats, um, where essentially anyone who um, who needs to urgently get out, children who need to get out, um, they text and and we coordinate the efforts as best we can. We get people uh, from uh, different cities to collect them and then we collect them from where we can and bring them to the border. So it's just been a concerted effort from every side and uh, that's just rescuing people, also delivering medications, delivering food, getting people to shelter, you know, every single Ukrainian. I'm getting in touch with people I haven't spoken to in years, just trying to get these supplies to the front and, and do what we can. I believe you rescued a friend of yours who's a Chinese national to drive him to the Moldovan border. I mean, how far is that exactly? And what's that journey like? You, it must have been frightening that you and your father drove him to the border, is that right? Uh, yeah, we drove him to the border. Um, it's, it was slightly scary. It was, um, it was a few days ago and... Um, Obviously, I mean, on our way there, we had we had tanks rolling down the streets, um, uh, rolling down the roads, coming to Kiev. Luckily, they were Ukrainian tanks coming to defend. Uh, but uh, essentially, it's very dangerous to go anywhere and and travel anywhere right now. Um, but you know, I I didn't feel like uh, we had any choice. I didn't feel like any Ukrainians even even questioned doing any of this right now. You know, this is a good friend of mine. He was at UCL. He's an international student. He was stuck in the middle of the, the city where the bombings were, you know, no one in their right mind would, would leave someone there. So, uh, we had to get him out and then the journey was long and it was difficult, but, but luckily he's, he's safe now and across um, the border. Valentina, um, you've already said that you're trying to get back to Kyiv. We've seen from the satellite images that there is a convoy of Russian armoured vehicles uh, on its way to the capital city, and that convoy is 40 miles long. Can I just ask what makes you want to go back to the city when that advance is in progress? <laughs> It's the same thing that makes me want to stay in Ukraine. It's the same reason I came back to Ukraine when this military buildup was happening, because this is my home and, and Kiev is my city, my home, and I want to be there to defend it and to do everything I can. Uh, you know, I'm, we're already doing everything we can while, while we, we're stuck in Chernivtsi and we have to stay here, but... You know, the danger right now is everywhere in Ukraine. The, the danger is extreme and it's and it's serious. But to to people, to me, who whose very identity and right to existence and, and right to be Ukrainians is being threatened, that that danger does, doesn't mean anything compared to the fact that that someone is trying to exterminate our, our very country and identity. So 
um, that is that is why I want to return. That is why I'm going to continue doing everything I can here because to me, there's no other choice. This is this is the survival of, of everything I am and everything I've always wanted to be. You say that you're prepared to do everything you can. Is that everything that you can to try and get more people out and supplies to those who need them? Or would that extend, as we've seen from a number of your compatriots, taking up arms? I am ready to defend my country as best I can, depending on the situation and depending on where I can be most useful. I'm not militarily trained, I'm not paramilitarily trained, um, but if there are soldiers walking uh, walking into my city, if, if I'm face down with tanks with Russian soldiers, then, you know, I can't tell you exactly how I will react in the moment, but I, but I do know that that I will resist whatever I can. And if it's Molotov cocktails, and if it's trying to d defend key areas, trying to defend people, uh, I will do that. Um, again, you know, I'm 19 and war is not something anyone in their life is prepared to do. And honestly speaking, I don't know what I will be prepared to do in that moment, in that second, but, but I do know that my country means everything to me. And sometimes that means doing anything to protect it. But Valentina, I'm mean, hearing you speak, I and mean, I know people at home right now will be just absolutely in awe of, of your bravery. Do you realise what is at, at what is the price you are willing to pay? That we are hearing of indiscriminate attacks on civilians in your country, cluster bombs, thermo weapons. Do you realise the risk that you are in? Are you prepared to take that risk personally at your age? There you are, and you could very easily remove yourself from that situation and no one would blame you for it. Are you prepared to take that risk? You know, risk is a relative thing because the real risk to me is that my country disappears off the map. The real risk to me is that there's a genocide against my people that won't be stopped and that the Ukrainian culture will be completely exterminated. Now, of course I am terrified um, and as I mentioned before, you know, there's no place in Ukraine that's safe right now because there's a monster who is willing to bomb civilian buildings for no reason. But to me, that personal risk, that, that doesn't mean anything compared to the risk at hand. And I think every single person in their life, and, and I think you've really seen this with the Ukrainian people as a whole, there, there are some things that define our lives and there are some things that, that make our lives worth living and that give us reason to be here. And, and for us right now, that is our brotherhood and sisterhood, that is our unity, that is our love for freedom and democracy. And, and you know, any price is, I'm willing to pay any price to protect that. And my my safety is, is secondary to essentially protecting the things that, that make my life worth living. Well, it's just incredible hearing you speak. Uh, what what more do you think we can do? Countries like Britain, do you feel like you're getting the support? Do you, is there a sense in Ukraine that countries like Britain, Europe are doing enough? Or do you think there is more that we can be doing to support your cause? Well, I will say completely honestly from here um, that the, the international response from governments and from people and from my, from my friends from all over the world, it has been incredible. It is humbling, it is heartwarming to see that the world does stand by Ukraine and the world recognizes what Ukraine is protecting for all of us. However, we need to understand that these sanctions are meaningful and these actions are meaningful, but nothing is meaningful enough until it stops Putin murdering my people. On a very practical, realistic level, nothing is meaningful enough until there is no more war. So we really need to focus on what are the immediate things that we can do to stop Russia's assault on Ukraine. The sanctions, their real pain, it will come in slightly later. The point at which they will make this war untenable to Putin, it will take a little bit of time. Ukraine doesn't have that time. I mean, you've seen that the convoy is moving towards Kiev, towards my capital. Um, and, and you see these indiscriminate war bombings, this slaughter, he is throwing everything at Ukraine to, 
to eliminate our people and then to eliminate our army. So we need more weaponry. Uh, we need as powerful weaponry as we can get um, to protect to protect ourselves, to hold out in this war. I, I hope the world can see that our people, our army, our normal people, we are giving everything we have. We are fighting to our deaths, but if we do not have the equipment to counter the most powerful army in this world, then, then that may not be enough. So I am really asking the world, we need a very concrete, very military response right now. And I would also encourage every country in the world to, to allow those who are willing to come and fight for us to, to come and, and to join the Ukrainian army and help because once again, this war is now about universal values and it's about universal survival. And you can see that by the very fact that Putin is, is, is threatening, I mean, he's threatening nuclear war. The moment he did that, this war stopped being territorial and stopped being regional, it, it became global. Um, because the threat of nuclear is global. If he cares so little about Ukrainian life, then he cares nothing for anyone else's life. So I would really encourage governments, please keep sending us equipment at your soonest possible opportunity. Please allow the people who are willing to come and fight for us to come and fight for us because we need everything. We will defend our country and we will defend Europe, but we also need you to stand behind us. That's a very, very clear and loud message from you, Valentina. Uh, we are speaking to... Uh, cabinet minister uh, here later and we'll certainly put that to him and, and ensure that Britain are doing everything they can to support what you're doing. Uh, we are sending you lots of love and support at this point because that's all we can do over here. Uh, send you our support and love at this point uh, and we wish you well and we commend you for your bravery at this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, quick question, how's your father? Is your father, father well? Yeah, he's well. He's working very hard to, to make sure all his colleagues and, and all the people who work with him are okay. Also getting them across the border, getting them supplies. So, so we're all doing everything we can. Valentina Butenko, it's humbling listening to you, frankly. Thank you very much indeed and stay safe.